that oh, here it's we fine. Here. You gotta put this down a little bit further. There you go. Prophecy, uh, a series, uh, that's a series, that's uh, four or five or six or seven or eight or nine or ten, and uh, I don't know exactly how many uh, messages I'm going to preach, but it's going to be a series on on the coming Sunday nights here in a row, say four or five or six, and uh, so you want to take some notes and write down some things and turn to some verses. And maybe some things on prophecy will come clear to you. Maybe some things that you've never saw before or understood before. And uh, be a great application to your spiritual life as a Christian. Uh, let's go to the Lord in prayer. Heavenly Father, is, as I come before the throne of grace this evening, I pray that you just wash me in the blood of Jesus Christ. And Lord, I pray that you would uh, help the Holy Spirit to have free course this evening. And I pray that you would teach your people your precious word. And Lord, may it uh, be strengthened and an encouraging and an inspiring to their hearts and lives. And Lord, may they apply it to their daily walks with thee, Father. In Jesus' precious name I pray, and for his sake, amen. All right, now first of all, I want to preach on the next thing that is going to happen in prophecy. And when I mean the next thing, I mean the next thing that God's going to happen on God's prophecy calendar. And that may happen tonight in about five minutes or less. And it might happen about ten seconds from now. There's no absolute time thing on it. And it may not happen for a while yet. Nobody knows the exact day nor the exact hour. And that is called the rapture in theology. The rapture. And if you want to know what the rapture is, take your Bible and let's turn to some places in it now. Uh, turn to 1 Thessalonians chapter 4. 1 Thessalonians chapter 4. And in 1 Thessalonians, there's the rapture. And this is the rapture where God comes along and takes all the Christians off of the earth. And he leaves nothing but unsaved people here. Not just the unsaved. He takes just the saved, just the born again, and takes them off this earth and takes them up to heaven and leaves the unsaved here. And you say, how can that possibly be? Let me give you an example of that. Now just suppose, this is just an illustration of, of the rapture, that you took a bunch of steel filings and put those steel filings in a, in a pile of dirt, in a pile of dirt or a pile of dust mixed in with some sawdust, a bunch of steel filings. And you look down there and you probably couldn't see the steel filings from the dust and the sawdust. And you took your great big magnet and you took that great big magnet and you swung that magnet over top of those steel filings like that. And you swing that magnet over top of those steel filings that are in all that dust and all that uh, uh, sawdust. You know what are going to happen? All them steep little pieces of steel are going to go pew. And they're going to jump from that, from that sawdust and that dirt right straight up to that magnet. And they're going to stick right to it. Bam! Right up there to that thing. And that's what's going to happen at the rapture. Amen. The Lord's going to come right along like that and he's going to change. And he's going to quote, and he's going to call out all the saved. And the saved are going to shoot right off of this earth. And they're going to go right straight up to heaven, just like that. And they're going to leave all the unsaved people down here uh, around. And they're going to be wondering what went on. Now, that's called the rapture. 
And you find it in 1 Thessalonians chapter 4. And you also find it in 1 Corinthians chapter 15. Those two places. Now we're going to talk about those two places in a minute. But before we talk about those two places, I want to talk about another place that confuses folks. Now don't confuse the rapture of the church with the rapture in the great tribulation. There's not only a rapture of the church age saints where the church age saints are raptured out and they're caught up and go to heaven, but there's also a rapture in the great tribulation period with seven years. And those tribulation saints, now, now it's not church age saints, they're raptured out before the tribulation, but there's a tribulation rapture where the tribulation saints are raptured out up into heaven. Now don't confuse those two places. Now that's what's wrong with the reading the Bible. Many Christians will read the Bible and they'll see the rapture of the tribulation. And instead of making that the rapture of the tribulation, they make it the rapture of the church. And then they get very confused in the matter. Now let me give you some examples. Take your Bible and turn to Matthew chapter 24. Matthew chapter 24. And in Matthew chapter 24, I want you to notice here is a rapture. And it's a rapture uh, not of the church age saints, but it's a rapture of the tribulation saints. A rapture of the tribulation saints, Matthew chapter 24. In Matthew chapter 24, and let's start reading with verse, uh, verse 26. Matthew chapter 24, verse 26 says, Wherefore, if they shall say unto you, Behold, he is in a desert, go not forth. Behold, he is in a secret chamber, believe it not. For as the lightning cometh out of the east, as, notice the word as, it's likening to them. As the lightning cometh out of the east, and shineth even unto the west, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. Now there it said the coming of Jesus Christ is like the, the lightning coming out and goes blam and everybody seeing the lightning. But that's not the rapture of the church age saints. That's the rapture of the tribulation saints. Because then everybody will see the Lord come back. But in the rapture of the church age saints, only the Christians will see the Lord come back. The unsaved people will not see what will go on? They will not hear the rapture go. They will not understand it. It'll be just, they'll just hear a noise. And the Christians will be gone. But they won't understand it. They won't hear the trumpet go. And they won't hear that sound. But in the great tribulation, those folks will. So when folks read the two passages, they put them together and they come up with confusion. That's what causes post millennialists to not believe in the rapture. That's what causes some preachers to say, oh, the rapture, the rapture, the rapture, and make fun of the rapture. And they have Bible verses to make fun of it. But don't confuse that. You say, how do you, how do you not confuse it? Read the next verse. That's always the case. <laughs> Read the next verse. Now watch it. In verse 28, uh, it says, for whosoever, for wheresoever the carcass is, the carcass, that's a carcass of dead animals, there will the eagles be gathered together. Then you take the eagles be gathered together and the carcasses, and you turn to Revelation chapter 19, Revelation chapter 19, and verse 17 and 18, and you understand that that is the tribulation. And not the church age. Revelation chapter 19. And then you read verse uh, uh, 17 and 18. And it says. And I saw the angel standing in the sun. And clothed with the, uh, 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 and cried with a loud voice. Saying to all the fowls. That's the eagles. That fly in the midst of heaven. Come and gather yourselves together. Unto the supper of the great God. That ye may eat the flesh of kings and the flesh of captains and the flesh of mighty men and the flesh of horses of them that sit on it and the uh, flesh of all men, both free and bound, both small and great. Then that there is the battle of Armageddon. In Matthew chapter 24, verse 28, is the battle of Armageddon just before the tribulation rapture. 
So don't confuse those two together. Read the next verse in Matthew chapter 24. Matthew chapter 24, verse 29 says, Immediately after the tribulation of those days, that's Daniel's 70th week then, immediately after the tribulation of those days. So then the passage with Matthew chapter 24 is a tribulation rapture and not a church age rapture. Let me give let me explain that again. Take your Bibles and turn to Revelation chapter 1. This is how folks get confused. They confuse the rapture of the church age saints with the rapture of the tribulation saints. Now let me let me show you again. Revelation chapter 1 and look at verse 7. Revelation 1 7 and it says, Behold, he cometh. That means the Lord's coming back again. Behold, he cometh with clouds. Is the Lord going to come with clouds at the rapture? Yes, he is. But he's also going to come in clouds at the second advent. Now watch this. He cometh with clouds. Now watch this. And every eye shall see him. Look at that. Every eye shall see him. If you take that verse where it says, every eye shall see him, and apply that to the rapture, then you'll say, and everybody sees him at the rapture. And that's not true. Only the same people will see the Lord Jesus Christ when the rapture comes back. But in the tribulation, when the Lord comes back, they're all going to see him. There's no difference. There are every eye shall see when he comes back in the tribulation. It's not a secret rapture in the tribulation. It's a secret rapture in the church age. Let me give you another example. Turn to Matthew chapter 27. I mean 25. Here's where a lot of folk confuse this. Matthew chapter 25. Now here again is a rapture of the tribulation saints and not a rapture of the church age saints. And these folks read the passage and get all confused because they don't separate the difference between the two raptures. All right, Matthew chapter 25. Now I'm giving you some meat tonight. I want you to chew on some meat. I'm giving you something to chew on. Matthew chapter 25, verse 1. Then shall the kingdom of heaven be likened unto ten virgins. Underline that in Matthew 25, 1. It said virgins, plural. Now that's not the church because the church is said to be virgin singular one. Singular one. The church is made up of every believer, the body of Christ, and that is the virgin herself, one singular, not ten. The ten virgins are in the tribulation. Those are plural, virgins. All right, again. All right, uh, likened to ten virgins that took their lambs and went forth to meet the bridegroom. Underline it in Matthew 25, 1. Notice it says, to meet the bridegroom. It didn't say go out to marry the bridegroom, because that's what the church does. The church goes out and is raptured out, not to meet the bridegroom, but to marry the bridegroom. And the ten virgins in the tribulation, they go out to meet the bridegroom. They don't go out to marry the bride. They go out to meet him. All right, again. Notice in verse 2, And five of them were wise, and five were foolish. And they that were foolish took not their lamps, and took no oil in them. But the wise, the wise took oil in their vessels, and with their lamps. While the bridegroom tarried, that's the Lord, he's the bridegroom, and they all slumbered and slept. And at midnight, that's the time, midnight, there was a cry made, Behold, the bridegroom cometh. Go out to meet him, not to, not to marry him. Verse 7, Then all these virgins, plural, arose and trimmed their lamps. And the foolish said unto the wise, Give us of your oil, for our lamps are gone out. Notice it said, for our lamps have gone out. Now how are you going to apply that 
to a church age saints. The lamps gone out, was the lamp lit? How many of you say the lamps were lit? According to the verse. Were the lamps, did all ten virgins have the lamps lit? <coughs> sure they were. Did it say they went out? Sure they did. How can you apply that to a church age saint? The oil is a type of the Holy Spirit. What happens? Does a Christian lose the Holy Spirit? Can't possibly be a church age saint. It can't possibly be anybody today. Because the oil is a type of the Holy Spirit. And they did have oil in them. And the lamps were lit. And the lamps were burning. That's the tribulation. You say, well, how do you figure that? Turn to Revelation. I mean, Hebrews chapter 9. And notice in Hebrews chapter 9, again, the tribulation rapture that you should not confuse. Hebrews chapter 9 and verse 28. And when people confuse the two, they come up with a messed up theology. Uh, Hebrews chapter 9 and verse 28. Hebrews 9, 28. So Christ was once offered to bear the sins of many. He bore the sins. He carried your sins. He took them to hell. So, so Christ, who once offered to bear the sins of many, and unto them that look for him, shall they appear the second time without sin into salvation. Now notice it says, unto them that look for him. You know what some folks say? Some folks say, if you're looking for Jesus Christ, you get raptured up to heaven. If you're not looking for Jesus Christ, you don't get raptured up in heaven. That's called the partial rapture theory. They believe in a partial rapture. They believe if you're looking for Jesus Christ to come, you get raptured up. If you're not looking for him to come, you don't. But that's not a church age passage for the tribulation, for the Christian to be raptured up. What is it? It's for the tribulation saint who is looking for Jesus Christ. He is one of the ten virgins. Five virgins were ready, the lamps were lit, so they went. Five virgins were not ready, so they weren't looking, so they stayed. They didn't go. How many of you follow what I just said? Follow that thing? Okay. So you don't want to confuse the rapture of the tribulation saints with the rapture of the church age saints. All right, now let's get into it in a little bit more detail. All right, take your Bibles and turn to 1 Thessalonians chapter 4 now. 1 Thessalonians chapter 4. Now here's the rapture of the Christians in the church age saints, in the in the church age time. It's called the rapture. First Thessalonians chapter four. And let's start reading verse thirteen. First Thessalonians four thirteen. But I would not have you to be ignorant, brethren. Don't be ignorant, brethren, concerning them that are asleep, that you sorrow not, even as others which have no hope. Now notice there in verse 13, it says, uh, concerning them. Now he's, gonna, he's, gonna, he's talking about a particular group of people. Concerning them. What group is he talking about? Concerning them which are asleep. Now the sleep in the Bible is those people, those Christians that have already died in Jesus Christ. They're already saved. They're already born again. And they are said to be sleeping in Jesus. Now that's not the soul sleeping. That's the body sleeping. They are said to sleep. You say, all right, prove that. All right. I'll take your Bibles and turn to Acts chapter 7. And in Acts chapter 7, look at verse 60 and shows you that the Christian is said to be sleeping when he is dead in Jesus Christ. All right, Acts chapter 7 and verse 58. This is at the stoning of Stephen when uh, Stephen uh, died for his preaching. Acts chapter, Acts, Acts chapter 7 verse 58. Cast him out of the city and stoned him. And the witnesses laid down their clothes at a young man's feet, whose name was Saul. And they stoned Stephen, calling upon God. And saying, Lord Jesus, receive my spirit. And he knelt down and cried with a loud voice, Lord, lay not this sin to their charge. 
And when he had said thus, now watch it, he fell asleep. He fell asleep. That is his body sleeping, not his soul. His body sleeping. But what is he? He's dead. He's dead. All right then. So to be asleep in Jesus Christ is a man being dead. Take your Bibles and turn to the Gospel of John. And turn to John chapter 11. John chapter 11. And in John chapter 11, I want you to see again what it means for a man to be asleep if he's saved. John chapter 11, and let's pick up verse 11. John 11, 11. These things said he, and after that he said unto them, Our friend Lazarus sleepeth, but I go that I may awake him out of sleep. Now Lazarus is a man who's dead. Lazarus is dead. He's been dead four days. Uh, he said, Our friend Lazarus sleepeth. Verse 12. Then said his disciples, Lord, if he sleep, he shall do well. They didn't know he was dead. Verse 13, Howbeit Jesus spake of his death, but they thought that he had spoken of taking rest in sleep. Then said Jesus unto them plainly, Lazarus is dead. And I am glad for your sakes that I was not there to the intent ye believe. Nevertheless, let us go unto him. And so on and so on down through the passage. Then uh, notice in verse uh, 41 in the passage. Verse 41 says, And then they took away the stone from the place where the dead was laid. And Jesus lifted up his eyes and said, uh, said, Father, I thank thee that thou hearest me. And I know that thou hearest me always. But because of the people which stand by, I said it, that they may believe and that thou hast sent me. And when he had thus spoken, he cried with a loud voice, Lazarus, come forth. And he that was dead, now notice he's dead, it said he's sleeping, come forth bound hand and foot. Then Lazarus is dead, and he's been dead for four days, and Jesus said he what? Said he sleep. He's sleeping. So asleep in Jesus Christ means that a person is dead with their body. Their body is dead. I right, back to 1 Thessalonians chapter 4 now. Back to 1 Thessalonians chapter 4. In 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, and in verse 13 it says, That you sorrow not, even as others, even as others which have no hope. Now when he says that you sorrow not, even as others which have no hope, He's talking that you should not sorrow like an unsaved man sorrows when a loved one dies. Because when an unsaved man has a loved one died, they have no hope. So they sorrow and bawl and boo-hoo and cry and have commitment fit because they're never going to see their loved ones again except in hell. Amen? So you should, if your saved wife dies... I know that you would cry and bawl and boo-hoo about it, and it would be natural that you do. But, brother, don't go, don't go at it too hard because you will see them again. Yeah. You will see them again. There'll be a day that you will meet them again in heaven. That's why he said you sorrow not as they sorrow. That's why he said that. All right, let me give you an example. Turn to Hebrews chapter 2, verse 15. Hebrews 2, 15. And notice this verse. Hebrews chapter 2, verse 15 says, And to deliver them who through the fear of death were all their lifetime subject to bondage. Now notice he says, To deliver them who through all their lifetime were subject to bondage. Then an unsaved man, all his lifetime, you know what he's afraid of? He's afraid to die. He's afraid to die. I'll say it again. An unsaved man is afraid to die. 
A Christian does not have to be afraid to die. You say, I'm afraid to die, but I'm saying you're not believing the Bible then. Because you shouldn't be afraid to die. Because this life ain't all there is to it. You're absent from the body, present with the Lord. You say, I'm afraid to die. Then you might be lost. You shouldn't be. Oh, you're ignorant of the Bible, one or the other. It might be that you're ignorant of the Bible. It might be that. All right. Verse 14 now. For if we believe that Jesus died, I'm in 1 Thessalonians chapter 4. For if we believe that Jesus died, we do. How many of you believe that Jesus Christ died on the cross for your sin? All right. And arose again. How many of you believe that he arose again? All right. Even so them also which Sleep in Jesus. Now, what did I just get through showing you that sleeping in Jesus was? That means the body is sleep. Then if you have a mother who's dead and she's up here at the out here in the graveyard, she's asleep in Jesus Christ. Her body is. She's alive with Jesus Christ, living with Jesus Christ, walking around the throne with Jesus Christ, and rejoicing in New Jerusalem. And her body's sleeping. Now you want to get that. Because if you ever have to stand at the casket of your mother. Or stand at the casket of your father. And they're saved. You can not a great joy and peace to your heart. They are asleep in Jesus Christ. Alright. Now notice it says. Those that are asleep in Jesus. Will God bring with him. Notice that. Will God bring with him? So when the Lord Jesus Christ comes back to rapture, he's going to come back with all the souls of those saved people that are in heaven today. Their souls are with Jesus Christ, and their souls are going to come back in the air. They're going to return with him. And they're going to return, their souls are going to return to get their body back that's in the tomb, that's in the grave, that's in the ocean, that's in the sea, or wherever it may be. And that soul's coming back. You say that soul's in heaven with Jesus Christ? Yes. It says in Philippians, it says, absent from the body, present with the Lord. It says also to depart and be with Christ, which is far better. The Bible says in Genesis, it says, as her soul was in the party, the soul leaves your body, steps out of your body, and goes to heaven. That's the soul. The body goes to the tomb, and goes to the morgue, and then goes from the morgue into the casket, into the casket, into the dirt, and stays there for however long it takes to the Lord to come back and get it. Amen? You all with me? Okay. Now let's go on. All right. Verse 15. For this we say unto you by the word of the Lord, that we which are alive, that's you and me, we're alive. We're not asleep in Jesus. We're alive. And remain, we're still alive, unto the coming of the Lord shall not prevent them which are asleep. Now notice says, shall not prevent them that are asleep. Now you say, what's the word prevent mean? All right, take your Bible and turn to Matthew chapter 17. Turn to Matthew chapter 17 or write it down in the margin. Write it down in the margin. Matthew chapter 17. And by the way, this is the only time that this word prevent occurs anywhere else in the Bible. It only occurs one other place at one other time, and this is the only time that it's found. It's not found any other time. You know that ought to be significant to you, because if you know if the two words in the Bible are only found those two times, and that they got to be connected together. If you only find them two times, brother, you can't disconnect them. You got to connect those two things together. <coughs> All right, Matthew chapter seventeen. And verse 25, Matthew 17, 25 says, let's, let's pick up verse 24 because that's where the paragraph mark is. Matthew 17, 24. And when they were come to Capernaum, 
They that receive tribute money, that tribute money is the tax collectors, about time to collect your taxes about this time of year, so you know who those fellows are. Uh, that's the federal government, brother. Uh, Compertium, they that received tribute money came to Peter. They come to Peter and said, Does not your master pay tribute? And they say to Peter, How about, how about your master Jesus? Does he pay his income tax? And I put old Peter on the spot. And they say, ah, come on, tell me. Does he pay his income tax? Okay, now next verse. Next verse. And, uh, verse 25. And he said, yes. Yeah, he does. And when he was come unto the house, Jesus prevented him, saying, What thinkest thou, Simon? of whom the kings of the earth take customs of tribute, of their own children or of strangers? Peter said unto him, Of strangers. See, Jesus said unto him, Then are the children free, notwithstanding, lest we should offend them. Go thou to the sea, uh, cast a hook in, one hook, and hook, just one hook, not a net now, and take up the fish. And the, fir the first cometh up, the first fish you catch, Peter. Well, that's a miracle if you've ever seen one. And when he opened his mouth, thou shalt find a piece of money that take and give unto them for me and thee. Then he said, Peter, go out there, take one hook, throw it over the edge. The first fish that comes up in that fish's mouth will be my taxes and your taxes and go pay it. Well, do you know how impossible that would be? The first fish that come up? Now try that one for a while. I got an illustration that I made up. I made this up in my head. But this is the way I do it. It, ain't, it is not scripture, but I just made it up up here. This is this out. Oh, guy's out here on a bridge and he's walking across a little bitty walk bridge and he's flipping him a, a, a golden gold piece like this. Ooh, I'm rich. I got a gold piece. Ah, up there it goes. Oh, oh, I'm delusional. Oh, he reaches out over the water. Ah, it dropped out. And the fish comes along and gets it like that. And then swims on down the stream like that. And swims down beside the dock. Gets close to the dock. And Peter throws in his hook like that. And the fish comes along. Here's another. Here's Simon. Here's a, uh, uh, a Matthew or, or Paul or somebody over there fishing beside him. He's got his hook in. And the fish comes along and says, oh, no, don't get on. Oh, that's the wrong hook. Get over there. Get over. Get on. That's the wrong hook. Get over there. Get, get on that. There's Peter's hook. Get on Peter. There you go. Now get it. Get it. Peter, get it. Bring it up. There he brings it up and opens up. There it is, Peter. Brings it up. There's that gold piece. So, preacher, you believe that? That's a miracle. Amen? Why? Because Jesus Christ was God. Jesus Christ was the Lord God Jehovah. He can control all the fish in this universe. Universe, the world. <laughs> Amen? You believe that? But that didn't explain uh, my thing, did it? <laughs> now, back to verse 25. He saith, Yea. And when he was coming to the house, Jesus prevented him. Jesus prevented him. Now, how does that work out with the other verse? Prevented. You know Peter, but now Peter's just as quick as he can be. Peter don't beat around the bush, boy. Peter just straight across. He's just going to, blam, 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 blam. He ain't going to. Uh, be phony to nobody. He's just going to start talking to Jesus as soon as Jesus walks in the room and old G Peter has his mouth open like this and he's going to get ready to ask Jesus about the tribute money and he says and about that time the Lord says uh, mm, Peter okay and then tells him what to do. Then what Jesus did was done something ahead of time so Peter didn't have a chance to do it. The word prevent means to do something ahead of time then. That's what the word prevent means, is to go ahead, went ahead. Now turn back to 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, and notice what that is about the rapture. In 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, in 1 Thessalonians chapter 4 it says, uh, in verse 15, uh, and the Lord shall not prevent them which are asleep uh, uh, and alive and remain under the coming of the Lord. Shall not prevent them that are asleep. Then you and me 
can do anything about when the Lord comes back with his saints. Brother, you ain't going to have time to drive to the graveyard and stand in the graveyard and watch all those graves come open and watch people come out of them. All you've got time to do is look out the window or look around you. As you just happen to be. I hope I'm at the graveyard preaching a funeral <laughs> when the rapture comes. Because you know what I'll do? I'll look at all them graves. My eyeballs will get about that big around and the hair will stand up on the back of my neck and I'll go, Whoo, this is it, brother! And then out of that grave will come our soul! Yeah. What a sight of this universe out of me. Man, you talk about something to see, brother. You ain't never seen nothing in your life like it. And that's the time I'm waiting for. Do you know a hundred million people down through the ages have waited for that time? They waited and waited and waited and waited and waited for that time. I'm going to say it. Well, you will too if you're alive. All right. Now let's go on. Verse uh, shall not prevent them that are asleep. Verse 16. And the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout. With a shout. Now I want to give you that shout there. All right. That shout is found in the scriptures. Take your Bibles and turn to the uh, book of Revelation for a minute and notice that shout Revelation turn to Revelation chapter 4 Revelation chapter 4 in Revelation chapter 4 it says in verse 1 it says which is a type of the rapture the church being raptured out a picture of the rapture of the church, uh, church age saints and Revelation chapter 4 verse 1 says, After these I looked, and behold, a door was open in heaven. That's a literal door up there in heaven. And the first voice which I heard was that was, was of a trumpet talking with me. We will see that trumpet in a little bit. We haven't got to the trumpet yet, but we'll see it. Which said, now here's the shout, Come up hither. And I will show thee things which must be hereafter. Come up hither. Now that expression occurs three times in the Bible. It occurs once for the Old Testament saints. It occurs a second time for the church age saints. And it occurs the third time for the tribulation saints. Three times and only three times does it occur. Once for the Old Testament saints, come up hither. Once for the church age saints, come up hither. And once for the tribulation saints, come up hither. Then along with the Lord, when he comes back, he'll come his hand, maybe, and say, Come up hither! And out you will go. Now along with that, but there will be another thing. Take your Bibles and turn to the Gospel of John and turn to John chapter 10. John chapter 10. And John chapter 10. John chapter 10. And John chapter 10 verse 1 it says, Verily, verily, I say unto you, He that entereth not by the door unto the sheepfold, but climbeth up some other way, the same as a thief and a robber. But he that entereth in by the door, that's the door of Revelation 4.1, is the shepherd of the sheep. And to him the potter openeth, and the sheep hear his voice. And he calleth his own sheep by name, and leadeth them out. That passage in verse 3 is the rapture of the Christians being raptured off this earth and taken up to heaven. And he says he calls them by name throughout the Bible. You know what God is definitely doing? God says to Paul, he says, Paul, he says, Saul, Saul. And he says, uh, Simon, Simon. He says, Jonah, Jonah. 
He says, uh, Samuel, Samuel. Many times throughout the scripture, he gives a man two times. You know what the Lord's going to do? When he comes back, he's going to say, Nathan, Nathan. Come on, hit her. How am I going to go? That's called the rapture. You say it's a secret. It absolutely is a secret. To the saved, to the unsaved, they do not hear it going on. You say, prove it. Okay, fine. Turn, take your Bibles and turn to the book of John. Turn to John chapter 12. John chapter 12. And in John chapter 12, I want you to notice in verse 28. Now, notice there's many other verses. I could show you about 25 or 30 verses that go along with it. Job chapter 37, 1 through 5 would go along with it. Job chapter 40, verse 9 would go along with it. Revelation chapter 14, verse 2 would go along with it. And on and on and on. But the key verse is uh, the Gospel of John. John chapter 12 and verse 28. And let's read it. John 12, 28. Father, glorify thy name. Then came there a voice from heaven saying, I have both glorified it and will glorify it again. Then as Jesus Christ is standing right there, he looks up to heaven and says what? Glorify thy name. And then it says there was a voice out of heaven, a voice, a voice from heaven saying, I have both glorified it and will glorify it again. Now who is that? That's God the Father up in heaven talking to God the Son, Jesus Christ, down on earth. How many of you follow that? Okay. Now let's read the next verse. F uh, uh, Father, glorify thy name. Then come there a voice from heaven saying, I have both glorified it and will glorify it again. Verse 29. The people therefore that stood by and heard it said that it thundered. Others said an angel spoke to him. Jesus answered and said, This voice come not because of me, but for your sake. Then the unsaved people that are standing round and about, they look up and hear. Did they hear God the Father talking? No, sir, he, they don't. But is God the Father talking? Yes, he is. And the voice is coming from heaven. What do they hear? Thunder. Thunder. So at the rapture, when the rapture occurs, and the Lord comes back to take you home to heaven, you know what an unsaved man's going to hear? A terrible noise is going to shake his ear long and hard. But he's going to say, boy, must have been a jet plane going through the sound there. Whew, man, what a thunder that was. A bomb must have went off. Somebody must have shut off some black powder down here or something. <laughs> he ain't going to know. And then he's going to look around and the saved are all going to be gone. And they're going to be all hell take loose and break loose and have it going. And train wrecks and the radio station going blip and the TV station going blip and everything else going blip. And the unsaved people are going to say, where's my wife? Where's my husband? Where's my children? Where's the preacher? I hope it's a preacher. <laughs> I hope all the preachers are saved. A lot of them will say, well, the preacher and me, we're still here. Wouldn't it be a terrible thing for you to be sitting in this pew tonight and the Lord blow the trumpet and ever a Christian go out right smack dab through that ceiling and you look around and say, where did they go? You say it might not happen, it sure will. That happened to somebody. You'd probably have a conniption fit. You'd probably lose your mind. You'd probably go crazy. About that point, you'd probably flip out. Or you're going to hell. You're going to hell now. You'd probably go to hell in the tribulation too. Why get excited, man? You're going to hell. You'd probably go to hell in the tribulation the same. All right, again, let's go on. All uh, right, you say, uh, uh, give me another verse on it. Turn to Acts chapter 9. And look at verse 7. In Acts chapter 9. In Acts chapter 9. 
And in verse 7, the Lord comes uh, and talks to some folks. Acts 9, 7 says, A man which journeyed with him stood speechless, hearing a voice, but seeing no man. Also, in Acts chapter 26, verse 13, in Acts chapter 26, it says this in his book. Acts 26, 13. And it says, uh, And at midday, O king, I saw the way a light from heaven above the brightness of the sun and shining around about me and them that journeyed with me. And when we were all fallen to the earth, I heard a voice speaking in to me, saying in the Hebrew tongue, Saul, Saul. And yet in Acts chapter 22, verse 9, it says in Acts 22, 9, it says, uh, Acts chapter 22, verse 9 says, And they that were with me saw indeed the light and were afraid, but they heard not the voice of him that spake to me. So they heard not the voice. Do you know why they didn't hear his voice? Because they're unsaved. They're unsaved. Unsaved man won't see the rapture because it's secret. Only the saved are called out and taken home to heaven. All right. Again, take your turn back to 1 Thessalonians chapter 4. And let's read the next verse. 1 Thessalonians chapter 4. And let's read the next verse. Verse 16. And the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout and with the voice of the archangel and the trump of God and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Now notice in verse 16 it says, the trump of God. You know what that is? That's a trumpet. Then when the Lord comes back, he has a trumpet that he's going to sound. And that trumpet is going to call you home to heaven. And every time I hear this uh, trumpet at, up at the fair here, they play this here thing when the, just before they have that horse race, they have that, they get that trumpet out there and they go, playing that horse race deal, you know, off to the horses. Sometimes I kind of think that that would be a good one to play at the rapture. <laughs> You ever see on the back of a little sticker on a card that says, I'm looking for a trumpet. I'm listening for a trumpet. You know what that is? That's the Lord going to send one of his angels and he's going to blow that trumpet. All right, again. Verse 17. And we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the cloud to meet the Lord in the air. And so shall we ever be with the Lord. Wherefore, comfort one another with these words. That ought to be a comfort to you. One more passage on it. Turn to 1 Corinthians chapter 15. And let's get one more passage. 1 Corinthians 15. And 1 Corinthians 15. And pick up verse 51. 1 Corinthians 15, 51. Behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep. We talked about sleeping being dead. Now, we won't all be dead. But we shall all be changed in a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trump, for the trumpet shall sound, and the dead shall be raised incorruptible, and we shall be changed. All right, now notice it said the trumpet shall sound. That's the trumpet going. And notice also in the passage, it said... In the twinkling of an eye. You know how long the twinkling of an eye is? Now look at here. Hear how long the twinkling of an eye is. Did you see it? I'll give it, I'll show you how long the twinkling of an eye is. Did you see it? <laughs> That's how long it's going to be, brother. Bam! Like that and you're going to be gone. You're going to be in heaven. Just about that quick. And then it says, And ye shall be changed. For this corruption, that's the body I got now, must put on incorruption. And this mortal must put on immortality. Then what's going to happen is the Lord's going to give you a new body at the rapture. And as you go out through the air, as your feet come off the ground, 
and you go up through the clouds, the Lord's going to give you a body that can never die. The Lord's going to give you a body that can't have pain anymore. The Lord's going to give you a body that can't sin anymore. <clears throat> Boy, that ought to put chills up and down your back, backbone, brother. You say not sin anymore. I said not sin anymore. Brother, no more temptation. I can do anything I want to do then. I won't have to worry about whether it's sin or not. I can say anything I want to say. I can think anything I want to say. I can feel anything I want to feel. I can do anything I want to do. And it won't be sin against God for one second. Brother, that's what's going to happen at the rapture. Now the question is, are you going out at the rapture or are you staying here? Or are you staying here? What happens if you miss the rapture? What happens if you miss the rapture? You're in trouble. All eyes closed and all heads bowed. There's only one way not to miss the rapture, and that is for you to receive the Lord Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior and trust in the shed blood of Jesus Christ on the cross of God. There's no other way. I ask you to see.